This is a digital music trance coverage of Medem 2014, an interview with uh, Warren Johnson, CEO of uh, W Communications, and uh, Ronnie Trainer from uh, Vision Artists uh, Limited. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. So, uh, hi Ronnie and Warren, uh, great to have you on. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Very good, having yeah. lots of fun. Yeah, it's good to have you here. And so, uh, you know, I want to start the interview by talking about, first of all, your individual companies, just to do a quick introduction, and then we can talk about your new project. So, uh, 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 Ronnie, first of all, uh, starting with you, what, what is Vision Artist? Vision Artist is a specialist uh, music services agency that brokers brand partnership deals on behalf of artists and brands. So, the company was born out of the need of the ever-changing landscape and how brand partnerships are so integral to an artist campaign now. The need for artists to have a, a third party to help them broker these deals and also to help brands understand that, you know, it's a very complex landscape out there. To, so we sit in the middle, sit between the two and, and broker deals on both sides. So we, we proactively go and look for deals for artists and we take briefs from agencies and some brands who are looking to work with artists. And uh, any uh, campaigns or artists that you, you are able to quote for as, as client previous clients? Oh, we're currently working with the Saturdays. We're yeah. currently working with Kylie Minogue. We're working with Queens of the Stone Age. We're working with uh, Plan B. Brands we work with are Samsung, Carling, um, first choice holidays we work with absolutely everybody okay. we've done about we've been going for about three years we've done about 75 deals in three years so yeah awesome. it's definitely a service that's required <laughs> and Warren uh, what about you what about W Communications so we're just over four years old so not yeah. much older than you guys uh, we're about 35 people strong we've got about six or seven clients uh, largely PR in its sort of broadest sense uh, across everything from social through experiential and a lot of editorial we represent a lot of media companies um, so Hearst magazine so L Squire Weekly uh, which we launched very recently we look after brands like we just got a forthcoming project with Toyota we do a huge amount of alcohol so mo mo we have a large drinks cabinet in our office of all the clients <laughs> we bad. represent uh, we're growing our fashion department so we look after brands like Jack Wills um, and then uh, the big sort of London uh, Olympic legacy project which is called East Village which is launching London's newest postcode so quite a broad range of uh, clients that's awesome. And so uh, I've got you here both uh, together. So this is because you're launching a, a joint venture. So what's the name? What is it all about? It's uh, it's called WVA, which is just a kind of combination of uh, of our first first letters, uh, imaginatively named. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, we were excited about the project, so we didn't worry too much about naming. Um, it's really born of the fact that um, Ronnie is is increasingly doing a lot more kind of brand work um, and we we operate a lot in, in the music space and there's um, certainly a, a frustration around that, that business is not done in the right way. From my experience, we get asked by ad agencies a lot to come in and help on talent deals where the contracts have been signed and at which point, you know, it's very hard to unpick that and try and think a bit more strategically. We've recently completed a, a really exciting collaboration with um, Sailor Jerry Rum uh, and Paul Simonon from The Clash, uh, which... Uh, ended up being a, a, a global um, standalone clothing line which we've launched across 10 markets and that was really a showcase for us in terms of how you put um, uh, music artists at the heart of the creative process so that was Paul was brought on board really before concept was fully developed and then we worked with him specifically and that I think that chimed massively with the, the ambition uh, that Ronnie has for how, yeah. how brands well, and we, yeah, we, together. We're sort of in a position where brands are coming to us as the sort of last port of call yeah. whereas really we should be sort of the first, one of the the first ports of call but a lot of the time we, we're faced with briefs that have been signed off by an agency or by a brand created often by a team of people who never worked in music or don't understand the intricacies of the music industry yeah. uh, and we have a hard time sort of trying to fit a square peg in a round hole sometimes but we have to get it done so what we want to do is get involved earlier and get artists involved in the creative process of, of, of these campaigns yeah and it's so important I've heard so much uh, talk about brands and artists in the last few days and that's been a theme for the last sort of year year and a half I mean definitely a very strong one but uh, do you find that artists are uh, prepared to get involved with brands on a, on a broader level than they have before? Like, you know, than just like the odd appearance or the odd, or the odd concert. You know, now uh, I think brands are requiring a more 360 approach to Absolutely. how they get involved with artists. Yeah, and, and art, artists have never been more open to collaborating with brands. You know, we're, the, the, the landscape we're in and the state of the music industry, you know, the, the funding isn't there anymore for videos and tours and where, you know, with traditionally the label would... would invest so now we're looking to brands but brands can't you know they don't even only just bring money which is what people first thought they're actually bring 
you know, basically they can take you to new markets, so open you up to new territories. Marketing new, budget. Yeah, marketing budgets, Dis- new dis- fans. Distribution and marketing um, is absolutely key in a way that, you know, obviously labels can't do themselves at all. But, you know, brands have phenomenal footprints now from a, from a sort of digital perspective. And if, if you know, something run and I talk to brands about all the time, which is don't just go and write a big check. Look, look at all the inventory you have and come on board as a, as a partner rather than someone that's trying to buy talent this services. There's interesting contra, th- contra deals yeah. you can do, you know, in terms of, you know, exposing each other to each other's fan bases. So, yeah, it's a very interesting time. And the film industry has successfully done it for a really long time, which is, you know, the amount of McDonald's Happy Meals that, are, you know, use kind of key artwork from movies to help promote. Very rarely is, is money uh, changing hands in terms of uh, cross, uh, cross-marketing deals for film and brands and I think you know increasingly music artists are beginning to get more comfortable operating in that space and now more so than ever as sort of earned bought um, uh, and um, and, and own media are beginning to to merge actually you you can start to add all of those into a single pot so you can add some ad spend you can add your own Facebook and social media profiles and bring that to the table and and contra that up so you get quite significant deals without or or deal value without necessarily having to get a checkbook out and that means that it's easier for brands to get deals away and actually they can offer greater value to artists sure and uh, looking at uh, companies like Red Bull and Converse that have done so, so successfully, uh, you know, combined their 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 fan base, their audience with uh, with the audience of artists that they're promoting, and they created a relatively uh, authentic feel to to their commitment because it's been so so ongoing. I was talking to also Deutsche Telekom and their Electronic Beats uh, uh, initiative, which yeah. has been going for 14 years. So, do you feel like there is a scope here for uh, brands to start realizing the value of being committed to music in the long term, and uh, maybe you know focusing also on like broader music projects rather than just like uh, artist to artist relationships? Yes, absolutely. There's, there's, you know, there's multiple opportunities out there, and as I said, it's, it's the time is ripe now. And yeah. you know, three or four years ago, there were certain managers who would say, you know, our artists will never talk to you, but they can't take that stance anymore. Uh, <laughs> they really can't. There's just, it they won't, they won't survive without it. But there's definitely things, and, and and we're pushing brands to be more creative in terms of what they do because they are, you know, dis- distributors. We did a, a deal last year with a beer company where. The, the band created their own beer, uh, which is now sold in 150 pubs across the UK with their with their name on it. And on every bottle of beer, uh, it's called Thornton's Brewery, but it's Reverend and the makers of the band. Uh, they put a QR code on each bottle, so you could scan the QR code and you got five. You got the album for a massively discounted price. So they probably sold an extra five and a half thousand units. Yeah. But but you know, so it's creative ways they have worked together. And I think you know, as consumers get harder to reach these days, particularly in uh, in the sort of youth market. I mean, TV advertising amongst you know, so 15 to 25 year olds, it's virtually impossible to connect with them. So it makes sound business sense identifying platforms that you know your consumers are passionate about and then taking long term investments in them rather than buying buying sponsorships and dipping in and out. You know, having having long term platforms actually gets you to become synonymous in those spaces and actually become seen as not just kind of uh, you know badging exercises, but things that are actually adding authenticity. I mean, we were you were talking earlier and saying that a lot of kids now almost are concerned if events don't have brands don't attached have brand, to them because yeah. it lacks that so they're so used to it that it's lacking that authenticity yeah. and certainly that's come you know 180 from when I first started working in marketing and you know no no kind of rights holders or artists were going wow. near brands and now actually it's it's it, it's really effective yeah. and the, the, on many levels the, the entry costs have kind of come down yeah. so actually more brands can play in that space if, if they're smart and it's, yeah absolutely and it, it's part of their marketing strategies now we sit with band managers at the very beginning of their campaigns they tell us exactly what the plot's going to be and where we could possibly you know slot slot partnerships in or what kind of partners they'd like to work with which was virtually unheard of before now it's a, it's an integral part of the you know the marketing marketing program and do you feel like managers I was talking with uh, Jordan Merlian uh, 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 Linkin Park's manager uh, yesterday and he was talking about how they have a very clear strategy on uh, segmentation of, fan, of their fan base so they want to know uh, what kind of brands their fans like what kind of activities they like where they, how they spend their free time but do you feel like uh, managers are already attuned to doing that kind of research with bands fan bases yeah I think just from, from, from working with multiple managers managers are no longer just standalone managers managers are now marketing directors of their right. own brands that's you know they have to be years ago you could just sit back and, and watch the record label do their jobs because that's how it was but nowadays it's not enough for a market for a manager to be like that they have to know and understand all the different services and channels and to take charge almost like a marketing director does of a campaign yeah, and how much do, do brands actually very like go and verify uh, and and you know research i guess the bands and their fan bases before they do a deal 
I mean, that's a good question. I think probably we'd love to see them doing more of it because it, it, it adds greater and greater um, legitimacy in terms of how that operates. But I, th I think that, you know, with things like social listening device uh, uh, tools, you can certainly get a, a, a relatively comfortable feel. And also, you know, I mean, we were talking about these things earlier. You can start to look at where, where units are sold and where ticketing happens yeah. without necessarily having to go into quite sophisticated you know, market, market research. Um, we do, there's a company that we're going to work with to help us sort of, to sort of sometimes we have to val uh, verify why a certain artist is right for a campaign so music metric i'm sure, yeah, sure. spoke to music Music metric is a very useful tool for me sometimes when i have to justify to a client not only just because i know it works from you know my sixth sense but you know i need i can sit there and i can drill down into where their fans are, are geolocated etc so yeah we're looking to use them a little bit more but as warren says you you know it, it's kind of there is a sort of part of it that's just you know the right artist is and so you know you just started this uh, joint uh, joint venture and uh, you know have you got some clients already lined up and how are you planning to to move in the next 12 months yeah, I mean, we're already uh, casting for our latest uh, collaboration with Sailor Jerry Rum. So we're, we're trying to match, you know, a, a punk icon. Uh, so it's quite a hard uh, uh, build. So we're working on that already. Um, and then we're looking at a whole bunch of other um, activations, both uh, in the UK and internationally. Obviously, because it's relatively early on, we're still at contract stages with clients so we, we can't reveal too many names but, but it's lots it's, going on behind the scenes there's a huge amount going on it's, it's come at a great time because um ge generally the whole marketing industry has literally in the last few months it feels like there's double the amount of money in circulation so it's yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of yeah it's you know it's I well, we've kind I, of come through we've come through the worst yeah. recession of, and and if we've got to this position i'm quite yeah. confident the next just few years just on your feet then, yeah. It? yeah i think yeah, yeah. And we both launched kind of in the midst the deepest yeah. darks of the yeah. recession and came out the other end looking so yeah yeah excited now about the next few years <laughs> and so is there a website that people could could visit for for this joint venture yet we currently got joint websites at the moment so yeah. we're in the process of joining them up but we'll be blogging on on this as well but my website is w communications co uk and ours is visionartist.com that's fantastic well uh warren and ronnie it was a real pleasure thanks so, so, so much Thank for joining you. me and thanks so much for listening to the DMT uh, coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or on youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends.